Changing seasons means changing footwear for some. Flip-flops and sandals may be fashionable, but they can be a source of foot problems. On today's edition of Being Well, podiatrist Joseph Borgini from Family Foot Care Center talks to us about common foot issues related to warm weather. We'll also learn if wearing nail polish year-round can harbor problems that you can't see. That's all coming up next, so don't go away. Production of Being Well is made possible in part by Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System, supporting healthy lifestyles, eating a heart-healthy diet, staying active, managing stress, and regular checkups are ways of reducing your health risks. Proper health is important to all at Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System. Information available at sarahbush.org. Dr. Ruben Boyajan, located at 904 Medical Park Drive in Effingham, specializing in breast care, surgical oncology, as well as general and laparoscopic surgery. More information online or at 347 2255. Rediscover Paris. Our patient care and investments in medical technology show our ongoing commitment to the communities of East Central Illinois. Paris Community Hospital Family Medical Center. HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital, delivering health care close to home. From advanced surgical techniques and testing to convenient care for your family, HSHS St. Anthony's makes a difference each and every day. St. Anthony's, where you come first. Welcome back to Being Well. I'm your host, Lori Banks, and today on the show, Dr. Joseph Borgini from Family Foot Care Center is here to talk to us about summertime foot issues. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Well, summer, well, really sometimes year-round, but summer in particular, we like to get out our flip-flops and our sandals and all those cute shoes that, well, women think are cute, but yet it brings about some problems for the feet. What is the number one thing you're seeing in your office during the summer months? I see uh, a number of things throughout the year, but in, in the summer particularly, we see heel pain, uh -huh. fungal problems in the skin and nails. Those are the things that we, that we see. Uh, and the unfortunate part of wearing those flip-flops is that a lot of patients will come in, men and women alike, uh, that wear them and just think it's a normal uh, shoe that they should be wearing all throughout the day and their feet get sore. Uh, those, those deformities that are, that are present are not supportive and it just is, is a real problem. It's been, I think, uh, a big problem over the last five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Let's, I said, uh, when, when we, before we started as a podiatrist, when you see people out on the street, what is the number one kind of shoe that makes you cringe? That shoe. The, the flip-flop. <laughs> the flip -flop. The all-around, the all-year-around <laughs> flip-flop or sandal. Right. It's, it's just uh, everybody thinks we live in California and in, mm -hmm. in, in central Illinois, but you know it's it's kind of an interesting thing. I just think it's a fashion statement more than anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to give you the foot, and I want you to explain when we're not we're going to pick on flip-flops a little bit, but for your real flat flip-flop, why is that so bad for our feet? Well, what happens is the. Uh, the arch is really under a lot of strain. Mm -hmm. And if it's weak with respect to musculature or structure, what ends up happening is that you strain that part of your foot and uh, the, 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 the lack of support, unfortunately, creates more problems in the foot. So if you have a deformity in the foot, no support, and then it just starts to collapse, 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 it puts strain on the muscles mm -hmm. and you end up just with sore, painful feet. I have people that come in and I ask them, you know, where does it hurt? Everywhere. Uh -huh. There's not one spot that doesn't hurt. So is part of the problem too because you've got that little thing between the, the, the two toes that has to hold the whole shoe on? I, I, I think that has some of it. Okay. Uh, some plays a part of a role in that, but I think it's more or less the, the lack of support. It's just, you know, like you're strapping on two pieces of cardboard and just walking. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the shoes that are available are, are uh, we have some here on the table that are alternatives mm -hmm. that could be used uh, instead of a flip flop, mm -hmm. but just as you know, they may say that they're not as fashionable. But you know, let me tell you, if you're walking in uh, one of these as opposed to a flip flop, your feet will thank you. Yeah. So if you have kind of existing foot problems during the other months, flip flops and those real flat shoes are probably not a good choice. Correct. Correct. All right. So we've got sort of the foot pain issues, but 
Summer, we're also sometimes walking barefoot, maybe in water, on a beach, public places. What kind of fungal, bacterial kinds of issues with the skin of the foot are you seeing? Well, the things that we see mostly, uh, right number one is the fungal nail problems. We see a lot of advertisements for that. We see the fungal skin problems, athlete's foot. Uh -huh. Also see advertisements for that. But the other thing is warts. We see those, those mm -hmm. are, are viruses that can get into the skin and then just become real problematic for a lot of patients. Heel pain, like I said previously, is another thing that we see. The other thing you have to be watchful of, and I've seen this often throughout the years, is foreign bodies, puncture uh -huh. wounds. Because uh, you're wearing a very light-soled shoe, you're not wearing uh, any shoe at all, mm -hmm. you can ha have puncture wounds, even you know, in the water or you know on, on the dry ground. Yeah, so I'm assuming for your diabetic patients, going barefoot, Wearing flip-flops is probably not recommended. Not a, not a good not idea. Those. A lot of diabetics suffer from circulatory problems, mm -hmm. lack of sensation, inability to feel the things that they're supposed to. They have structural deformities that aren't managed properly. So it's a very important thing to be wearing a supportive, protective shoe. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about athlete's foot. Really, what is that and what causes it? It is a true uh, fungal infection. Mm -hmm. Is an actual microscopic plant. <laughs> okay. And it's growing on you. <laughs> it starts in the skin and eventually can spread to the nails. The uh, interesting part is that if you're not treating the skin problem while you're treating the nail problem, you end up having a cyclic situation. Okay. You've, you've treated the nail, but the, not the skin, and you've treated the skin and not the nail. They kind of feed one another. Okay. So there's small little spores, which are seeds that can spread Mm -hmm. uh, to any part uh, on the foot. And remember that type of organism loves to grow in a dark, warm, moist mm -hmm. environment. Right. So what better place than inside your shoe? So what does it, what does it look like on the skin? It, it is a discoloration of the nail. You'll okay. see that thickened nail. Mm -hmm. On the skin, it can appear either as a dry, scaly, chronic skin problem, particularly in a moccasin type distribution, or it can be an acute problem where it's red, yeah, you have blisters mm -hmm. uh, and then they itch. So. so the toenail fungus and athlete foot are both the same yes. thing? It's just where they're growing? Yes, okay. and they're different organisms, mm -hmm. but they're both a, a fungal problem. Okay, yes. and so you you actually get more of that in the summer, even though people are tending to wear sandals and their feet are actually more exposed. Yes, because what ends up happening is that the temperature it's temperature dependent. Right. So the, the cooler months, you're not gonna see it as much uh, the, 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 the dry type uh, chronic uh, fungal infection you see all year round, but it's, it's the uh, moist heat that, that actually causes it to okay. fulminate and grow. So do you catch that from like walking around barefoot at the swimming pool or how do you get that? Uh, actually, it's, I believe it's hereditary. Dermatologists okay. will tell you that as well. It's related to the pH of the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, those that are prone to it have a different pH uh, in the skin. Those that are not prone uh, have a different pH. So if you have that perfect skin environment, then it'll grow. If okay. you don't, then it'll never show itself. <laughs> What's the treatment for athlete's foot? How do you get rid of it? Most of the uh, athlete's foot problems can be treated with over-the-counter uh, remedies mm -hmm. that you can buy at the store. But if the thing becomes unmanageable, then that's when you have to seek care and get a prescription. Mm -hmm. The fungal nail problems, uh, I think there is no over-the-counter product. Yeah and uh, you have to really do get a prescription. You've seen advertisements for those on TV, uh, and those do work, but there are medications that you may have to take as well to eliminate the, the and condition. It ta doesn't it take a while to get rid of toenail fungus? Nine to 12 months, because that's wow. what takes, takes the nail that long to grow. Okay, so those are funguses. What about warts? Are, are warts fungal? or No, what? that's a virus. Okay. okay. And actually, it gets into a small crack in the skin. It's a microscopic organism mm -hmm. as well. It hides out and eventually <laughs> becomes part of you. Okay. Uh, it, it, the body thinks it's you, but in the meantime, it's, it's, har it's harvesting uh, actually the RNA or DNA of, mm -hmm. the, of the body, and it Boy. becomes you. And so you have to fight it off through uh, different means, but sometimes the body doesn't know it's there, and it just mm -hmm. keeps growing. Are the warts on your feet the same as the warts that you can get on your fingers and yes. hands? Okay. Yes, those uh, look different because on the hands you're not standing on them, so they're more prominent. The ones on your feet are more in, 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 internal, so they look round. It almost looks like you have little 
uh, as, as some people say, the little seeds you can see, those are actually not seeds. Those are little blood vessels that are now going okay. from horizontal to vertical. Okay, I always so, wondered what those yeah, were. <laughs> yeah. So medicines do have to be applied, prescriptions. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have had those frozen out. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually use a little instrument to cure them out, and it's something that we have to do in the office under yeah. local anesthetic. Yeah. So do you get, how do you get those? Just, you can get the ACE Public it, places. Okay. The best place to get it is a swimming pool or a public <laughs> uh, uh, bathhouse, uh, which is usually affiliated with a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. So that is where you need to be wearing flip-flops. Yes, that's the one okay. time to be wearing those <laughs> so flip-flops. Very, very important, in for that shower. Yeah, in shower, for in, shower in shoes. Shower. Yeah. You also said that you see a lot more ingrown nails, toenails this time of year. And I think it has to do with the fact that they're hiding out either <laughs> by the, the patient's own uh, choice. Uh -huh. And they've tried to manage it themselves. A little toast, you know, yeah, that little, toenail surgery. A little that surgery uh, <laughs> suite in the bathroom. Yes. And they have their, you know, Reader's Digest license, excuse me. <laughs> but but uh, it, it's just something that they, they uh, wait until the last minute, and some can get really, really badly infected. Mm -hmm. So we see all varieties, but those are the things that we see, and we can treat those rather rapidly. And I think a lot of times patients have this big idea of how bad it's going to be and failing to realize it uh -huh. in five minutes after the toe is numb, which is probably the worst part of the yeah. procedure for most people, uh, the problem solved. So it's just, is it literally the toenail is just starting to grow into the skin and, or what? Secondary to self-infliction. Okay. Deformity is the secondary part, okay. the self-infliction, that is the patient has tried to remove it themselves and uh -huh. has left a small portion and the nail is now growing into the skin, acting as a foreign body, and the body uh -huh. does not want it there and creates an infection. <laughs> so don't do that toenail surgery in your own bathroom. That is correct. <laughs> Find someone with the proper That's tools correct. to do it from, do it with. I wanted to talk about, this happened to me. I went, this was actually a winter, so winter vacation, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're in, you know, boots and full shoes, and then you get to the beach and you start walking on the beach. It's warm and you love the sand on your feet and you keep walking and you walk. And this is what happened to me. I woke up the next day and I could not walk. The bottom of my feet hurt so bad. What, what did I do to my feet? A couple of things uh, that could be happening. First of all, it's a muscle uh, situation. Those intrinsic or small muscles of the feet have become overworked, mm -hmm. trying to support the foot in that uneven surface. I myself, and we didn't, I didn't tell you this, I myself had a stress fracture uh -huh. of my foot, uh, secondary to playing football on the beach many years ago. Uh -huh. And that was the most painful thing I'd ever experienced. And that's what happens that you stress, overstress the muscles and the mm -hmm. bones of the foot to try to adapt to that soft environment, even yes. though it feels wonderful. Oh, it's great. <laughs> you're just walking in a manner that your, your foot is not accustomed to. Mm -hmm. So did I like hold the, can you hold the foot sure. up? Did I like, is it the bottom of the foot? There's muscles or well, tendons on the bottom? Well, understand that the foot is made up of 26 bones all oh. operating in harmony and they uh, have to operate in harmony when they get, uh, out of harmony, what ends up happening is you're stressing the joints to a point of, of end limits. Mm -hmm. So in the arch, the same thing happens that I talked about with the uh, flip-flop, but the toe joints aren't functioning properly. I know this is all wired up, so I really can't move it that well, but your, uh, the bottom of your foot has a number of muscles, three layer of muscles, so those are all working to support the foot. And so the, the foot is twisting tremendously yeah. in, in, uh, in ranges of motion that it shouldn't be. So those muscles are under stress. So it's overworked and underpaid. So but it lets you know okay. the next day. So as, as fun as that might be to take that long sun, sunset walk on well, the beach. Well, you can do it, but you have to walk closer to the water where yes. it's nice and flat yes. and, and, and hard. But if you're in that soft, uh, Sand, I, I probably not recommend you doing. And then you see, I, I'm guessing you don't recommend people running on the beach. I've seen that. I've actually done it myself. Uh -huh. But again, if you're running, make sure you're running with the, not barefoot. Yeah. Run with your shoes and run closer to the uh, to the to the water line because that is the hard hard sand. Yeah. So. I think I want you to also address just the dangers of walking on a public beach and all the stuff, yeah, you know, that's, that can that's be in true. the sand. And, and the number one thing that I've seen throughout the years are, is glass. Mm -hmm. And here's the other one, shell. Shells. Shell pieces. Okay. 
I've actually had patients, one, two actually, that came into my office that had literally stepped on a shell mm -hmm. and had pierced through the skin and had in, in, uh, buried it in their foot. Wow. So, and so they were shell hunting at a beach in Sanibel, Florida. Uh-huh, which is a great place, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> be so, careful of the yeah. shells. I wouldn't, I was in Mex or in Key West and the beach there is all coral. It's very sure. hard to walk on yeah. and it it's is very kind sharp. Of, it's almost like glass. Yeah, Absolutely. it is. So be careful of what you walk on. Can you, um, you know, say you run out to, I've done this before on a really hot day, you say, I just got to run out to the mailbox and you walk across that really hot cement. Can you burn the bottom of your Absolutely. feet? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And you've probably seen videos of this where people drop eggs and throw it on the, uh -huh. and it's, that's how hot it is. I mean, it's, it's it really is hot. And the fact is, is that the sole of your feet is, are, you know, can become, let's say, uh, calloused to that temperature change. But if you're not in, used to that environment, uh, you know, it's just gonna be very painful and you could burn yourself. And the other, speaking of burns, we didn't talk yes. about this, sunburn. That's what I was going to That's talk about. That's the biggest problem that we see in the summer on the skin are people that have gone out, out of doors and haven't put any sort of sunblock mm -hmm. on their feet. That's the first place that you should be putting it on. Yeah. Because that is the most sensitive part. The top uh, of your the foot. The top of your foot can become very, very scorched. Yeah. Well, when my husband and I were on our honeymoon, he put sunscreen all over it, didn't do it on the top of his feet, and the next day he could hardly walk, yeah. could hardly put shins, shoes on. The shins as well, yes. same thing. I've actually seen uh, pictures of people purposefully uh, sunburning themselves in patterns using their shoes. As the, as, <laughs> and it's just kind of interesting, but so, yes. crazy stuff. Yeah. So make sure you get sunscreen all, everywhere. Yes. We tend to put it on the arms. Now put and the, the higher number on the feet. Yeah. Oh, why is that? Higher number on the feet because that is the very sensitive and prone because mm -hmm. it's not seeing the sun at all. That's true. Your yeah. face does, your upper arms and body and all that do, but you know, your feet just aren't. All right. So. We've got about eight, nine minutes sure. left. I want to talk about in the summer, it's great. We get outside more. We're gardening. Maybe, you know, we're starting to exercise a lot more outside. But that can also bring some problems in because, you know, we're maybe not wearing the best footwear or sure. our footwear is a little outdated. Let's talk about, ex out, you know, exercise and the kind of footwear. Well, we I, I brought some samples of some shoes here, uh, men's and women's running shoes here. Uh, I talk about this to our patients often. First of all, uh, if you're going to participate in these activities, get a good shoe. Mm -hmm. The amount of money that you spend on the shoe is based on the type of activity that yeah. you do. You could be spending $120, $150 a pair. The life expectancy of a running shoe is three months mm -hmm. or 300 miles. Yeah. One of those two come, you get a new pair. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to get a nice supportive shoe, thick soled, and make sure it's extra depth enough for that insert that you want to put in the shoe, the orthotic. I have a couple of samples mm -hmm. here, but in the shoe, you want to be able to slip that in, remove that sock liner. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a good, uh, uh, counter on the back that is the heel portion should be nice and stiff that controls the heel mm -hmm. and then also fit it's very important that you get a properly fitting shoe make sure you get sized okay and the important part is the size of the foot is uh, in, in, apparent not only with the length but the width so if you're not addressing the width as well as the length mm -hmm. then you're going to have issues make sure you have a uh, finger breadth at the longest toe it doesn't have to be the big toe it can be the second toe and then also the width. Width has nothing to do with the actual width of the shoe. It has to do with that uh, girth across the top. So okay. uh, make sure you do that. And uh, good shoe stores will have the ability to size you. That device, that Brannock device, they yep. will have it and <laughs> get it done and do it standing up. And if you're going to get sized and your feet swell, make sure you do it closer to the you know afternoon because that's that's the best time to get that that size. Now, do we need? I mean, there's different sh types of shoes: running shoes, mm -hmm. walking shoes, cross training shoes. For for a reason. Different. Okay. For a reason. Okay. You just named all the activities <laughs> that you could do. That's the shoe you wear. Okay. So if you're a tennis player, you wear a tennis shoe. If you're a cross trainer, you wear a cross training shoe. If you wear a running a shoe, you better be running in it. And. Uh -huh. uh, you know, a lot of patients uh, will come in wearing a running shoe just for comfort. That's great. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're going to spend that kind of money, make sure you get a, a, a shoe that's going to fit that activity. So those different types of shoes, they just have different types of support based on yes, what you're doing? Yes, they're constructed much differently. Okay. As a, you know, a running shoe could be a lot lighter. Uh, uh, a walking shoe could be a lot heavier. Mm -hmm. uh, a cross-training shoe could be a lot more supportive. So uh, 
you know, if you look at all the construction of how shoes are made these days, used to be canvas and rubber. That uh -huh. was it. That's all you had. <laughs> now there's a lot of choices. Yeah, so. You mentioned orthotics. Does, does every, how do you know if you need an orthotic? Does everybody need one? Do no. You, okay. They do not. Uh, okay. You know, it's based on symptoms. Mm -hmm. And there's not an orthotic out there that's going to change the foot structure to right. the point of making it better. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, it's not going to permanently resolve your problem. Just like eyeglasses won't resolve your eyesight. It just makes you see better. Okay. The devices themselves do nothing more than provide support and biomechanically control the foot to make sure that the foot is functioning properly. Okay. You can eliminate a lot of the pains related to heel pain, pinched nerves, and so forth. But uh, you know, if the orthotic is not working and you've done everything else, then a surgical option may okay. be needed. So orthotics kind of are designed to help you if you've got, if you pronate or yeah, under, flatter, flat, flat arch, foot, okay. high arch foot, mm -hmm. heel pain. All those things uh, can be, uh, uh, let's say, the symptoms related to those problems can be reduced. Okay. Sure. We, uh, we forgot to mention these two shoes here. Sure. You talked about, you know, we, we love our flip-flops and our sandals. These are, these are a little options. Better I, I, I just say these are options that for <laughs> men and women. This is more of a, like a beachcomber shoe for uh -huh. a man. And, and, and it looks like a sandal, but it's not. It's a shoe. Mm -hmm. and the same thing here with the women's shoe. It's a light shoe that encompasses the whole foot. And it's got a nice support in the shoe yeah. that you could probably put in there as well. A lot of shoe companies make these types of shoes. Velcro, easy on, easy off. Mm -hmm. So they're just a lot easier and a lot better for the foot. And I've noticed that these things, is there, there's not a lot of yeah. flex in it. And yeah. that's something yeah, that's you right. want. Right. You don't want it to be right. so. I mean, and you can get these waterproof, which okay. means they, they can be worn in the water. This shoe most likely could be worn in the water. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you can just use it just like a flip-flop but the problem is I think a lot of people are wearing those types of shoes for more convenience right style you can just throw them on Get so if you can bend on. your shoe in half that's not, probably a, good not a good idea <laughs> not a good idea <laughs> you should not be able to bend your your shoe in half these yeah. are this is a good choice I always here love that line if the shoe fits wear it <laughs> all right so we've got about five minutes left and I want to talk about something that I'm sure a lot of our women viewers and a lot of your patients do we love having our toenails painted in sure. the summer sure. be, to show off those beautiful nails with yeah. those cute sandals. Um, what advice do you have about toenail polish? Let's talk about uh, where you get your pedicure first. Okay. Make sure that when you're doing so, you go to a qualified facility. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know that their instruments are sterilized. I've even seen patients bring their own instruments in mm -hmm. and had them sterilized and this way they're not using uh, you know, public instruments. But the, the bottom line is, is that when you do get a pedicure, you're covering the nail with an acrylic material mm -hmm. that doesn't allow the, the nail to breathe. Okay. Nail is actually living tissue more in the nail root section, mm -hmm. but not uh, out at the tip, but it is attached to the nail bed. So when you suffocate that nail with polish, you're leaving it prone to anything that could infect it, like bacteria or fungus, mm -hmm. fungus in particular. I've seen women who have continually worn a nail polish, nail polish, nail polish, and then they take it off after nine months, and guess what they have? <laughs> Toenail fungus? Toenail fungus. <laughs> so the thing is, it's very important that if you're going to do this, you know, depending on how long you keep the nail polish on, mm -hmm. you probably want to get those nails free of that nail polish. Uh, completely and let that nail breathe for at least a week or two okay. and then go back to uh, the, the polish. The acrylic uh -huh. products that are out there that uh, you know uh, have to be maintained and filled, mm -hmm. those, are, those are bad even for the nails uh, of the okay. hand on your fingernails. And, and toes. I've seen okay. that. I've seen so that it's okay to have the polish but n take it off, yeah. let the nail breathe for a right. week or so absolutely. and if you do find some problems Make sure you get it taken get care of. Get evaluated, absolutely. Okay, so we've got about a minute left. Just give us a, your list of things that you would like to get out there for keeping our feet healthy in the summertime and warm weather months. Very, very important that, that people understand your, your, your feet are very important. You get one pair uh, your <laughs> entire <it>. <laughs> life to take care of them. Yeah, if you find any problems, especially during the summer, the things what we just uh, talked about, the ingrown nails, the warts, calluses we didn't talk about, uh, ingrown nails, heel pain, any of those problems, get them evaluated yeah. by, by, a, by a professional. Yeah, because that, that, that pain usually doesn't necessarily go away. It That's may correct. subside, but those warts and the, that 
toenail fungus. That just doesn't magically disappear. Not topics people like to talk about, but <laughs> they're, they're important things. Yes. Your, your um, eyes and uh, teeth are very important, so are, so are your feet. That's right. Well, it's what holds everything up. That's right. <laughs> Right. Dr. Borzini, thank, thank you so much for coming by Being Pleasure. Well today and giving Pleasure. us great advice. Thank you. Thank you. Production of Being Well is made possible in part by Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System, supporting healthy lifestyles, eating a heart-healthy diet, staying active, managing stress, and regular checkups are ways of reducing your health risks. Proper health is important to all at Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System. Information available at sarahbush.org. Dr. Ruben Boyajan, located at 904 Medical Park Drive in Effingham, specializing in breast care, surgical oncology, as well as general and laparoscopic surgery. More information online or at 347 2255. Rediscover Paris. Our patient care and investments in medical technology show our ongoing commitment to the communities of East Central Illinois. Paris Community Hospital Family Medical Center. HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital, delivering health care close to home. From advanced surgical techniques and testing to convenient care for your family, HSHS St. Anthony's makes a difference each and every day. St. Anthony's, where you come first.